I mean, we were kind of basking in a uh, kind of surprising win for the Redskins yeah. on Sunday, and then you had the Monte Nicholson news kind of ruin it. Yeah. It's always something. Yeah, um, obviously that, uh, you know, what, what's been released by police to this point paints a pretty disturbing scene. Um, you know, we'll, we'll have to see what else comes of that investigation and where that goes, but uh, right. troubling. Uh, so the Skins so far, I mean, you know, they start out, kind of hot record-wise, but we all knew it wasn't real, like sort of the way they were doing that whole winning ugly thing. You just kind of shake your head and go, we'll take it. But uh, yeah. And then, of course, it came back to haunt them. Of course, injuries have been a huge factor. The fact that they've gotten to seven now, though, um, does that protect Jay? I mean, I don't know. Like, if you fired Jay, I mean, and you do it now, that to me is sort of counterintuitive. Like, he's really never had less to work with, Mm -hmm. yet they're still mathematically alive at Christmas, Mm -hmm. and their roster has been destroyed by injury, and you've had all these distractions, all these self-inflicted wounds from, you know, people above him through, you know, Reuben Foster and just, you know, the litany of of sort of madness that goes on there. (sighs) And who are you going to get? You know, the last time... I re- this is going to be a crazy head coaching sort of, uh, you know, search process. I think you're going to have eight or nine teams looking for coaches. You, you're at, it's a time when, when the group of candidates is really barren. It's bone dry. Teams are, are coming up with names, but they're really having the stretch to do it. And this would be one of the least attractive jobs out there. Like, who do you think you're getting? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Like, this is – the last time you did this, you ended up with Jim Zorn. Right. Like, right. as your offensive coordinator – and then your head coach. And you should have just kept the dude who the players wanted to have it and everybody. You should have just kept Greg Williams. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, you're going to get rid of Jay. He's going to go get a job somewhere else. And, like, you're going to hire somebody else's quarterback coach or you're going to take a chance on a college guy. or You know, and, and who's coming there saying, okay, well, wait a minute. Nobody's ever won with Dan. And we might owe $54 million to a quarterback who might not ever be able to play again. And we don't have a clear path to getting a quarterback. And, you know, look at the state of this roster. Who are our skill players? I mean, good luck. Yeah. Well, and, but something has to give, right? Because the fan base, you can clearly see, I mean, they're just not showing up for games fire anymore. Bruce. He's got to throw the fans a bone and fire Bruce. Yeah. Why and, doesn't and he? shift the paradigm of the front office and – Give people something they can believe in long term. Why does he? What is the discount? You can you cover when you were at the post. You covered the Redskins. But the, the, the Dan Snyder is such an enigma to us as fans because he doesn't make himself available to anybody, right? So all yeah. we see is just this image of him in the in the uh, in the luxury suite, and then you know all the drama that surrounds it, yeah. you know, the lawsuits and everything else, and we can see the chaos, but we don't know the guy, the person, what makes him tick. Yeah, you know, I don't even know if he's a smart guy. I don't I don't know anything yeah. about this guy. I would bet no, because every other business fails. I, I I I'm <laughs> with you, but I just don't know him. He's the, is he the biggest enigma? in the NFL as far as owners? I mean, he's certainly up there. I mean, he's doesn't. it's not like he's one of these guys who is super chummy with all the other owners. You know, there's sort of a small group of guys who he talks to. Um, he's never been particularly popular at the league office or amongst a lot of his peers. How is he? Um, like, is he just like a weirdo? Like, honestly, like, is he socially he's off? socially awkward, you know? I think he... Trust who he trusts, and he doesn't trust anybody else. I think he is, um, as much as he has this tough guy persona, I think he's incredibly, um, I think he's not self-assured at all. And I think criticism gets to him tremendously. And I think sometimes he avoids doing the obvious thing because he doesn't want to, in his mind, give in to the people who, you know, keep ripping me, who won't, you know, who won't uh, treat me fairly. Um, you know, everybody's out to get me. So thing. And then it to a vicious cycle where you keep a Vinny Serrato way longer than you should have. In this case, you keep a Bruce Allen way longer than you should have because you prize loyalty above all else. I feel like I'm talking about Donald Trump here. Now, like the longer I go on this soliloquy, but yeah. who's in the trust and, you know, who will take the secrets to the grave and who can I call at two o'clock in the morning and say, get over to the house. And they're there by two fifteen. So the- like, so the, more we, stuff. so the more we clamor for Bruce to go, that it's... Yeah, that, it might be reverse psychology time. Like, there should yeah. be a petition to give Bruce a lifetime contract, and then maybe he'll do the right thing. Right. Oh, so bizarre.
quarterback dilemma for next year with Alex Smith's um, status like, being questionable. Big time questionable. You assume they draft somebody. Colt McCoy's under contract. Do you know all of the cap implications? Like I, I've been saying, like the the truly like it, it's probably a reach, but the truly bold thing would be to cut him before the uh, March deadline and just eat it now. Well, yeah, you you yeah you could cut him, um, designate him a post June first uh, cap casualty, and then spread that out and you know take your lumps. I mean, the reality is they're not competing for. A- to, to project Alex Smith beyond, I mean, to project him for 2019 is a stretch. To project him beyond 2019 is really a stretch. So, you know, maybe you, you just take that hit and, and move on. I don't think they were going to be having a monster free agent class in 2019 either way, and especially now without a quarterback. I just don't know that that would make a whole lot of sense. Um, if anything, I think they'd be shedding some salary. You know what I mean? Do we keep going down this road with Josh Norman, or do we reallocate those assets? Yeah, I mean, it's a team sort of at a crossroads. I mean, it feels like a team whose window's closing, but they accomplish really nothing in the window. <laughs> right. Do they have you any? You know, it's, it's yeah. two quarterbacks. It's, you know, perpetually year-to-year with them, and the blueprint for long-term success is it there. 